Games love to sell themselves as a fusion of two things you love, Assassin's Creed, but Lord of the Rings. Star Wars with Dark Souls combat. Skyrim with guns. I typically tend to roll my eyes at such reductive statements, but sometimes it really does end up being the perfect way to describe a game. Such is the case with Splitgate, which sells itself as Halo meets Portal, and it's one of the few times I've gone, yeah, that is exactly what this game is, and also, it's freaking awesome. Game the lead. This free-to-play early access shooter has actually been around for over two years now, but recently it has taken the internet by storm, going from a peak player count of less than 1,000 back in June, to over 67,000 at the time of this video and growing, thanks to its recent release on PlayStation and Xbox. Triple kill. In an age where the competitive shooter space is highly crowded and indie shooters don't really make much of an impression, this is impressive to say the least. It begs two questions though. What makes Splitgate so damn appealing? And should you play it? I can answer that last question with a resounding yes. Let's start with the Halo part of Halo meets Portal. Splitgate's gameplay is trying to capture a very, very specific part of the Halo multiplayer experience, 4v4 arena matches. Sure, you got your Team Deathmatch and King of the Hill, staples of the FPS genre, but you might notice a couple of very Halo-sounding game types like Oddball, Team SWAT, and of course, Shoddy Snipers. Damn, can they like, can they do that? By using the exact same name, Splicky is making it very clear what this game is gonna play like, which I would say is closest in feel to Halo Reach, but with a few key differences. Splitgate doesn't have equipment you pick like Reach does, and has made the sprint and jetpack of that game a standard part of your toolkit. There's also no loadouts, thank god, and instead you'll find timed weapon pickups on the map, many of which will feel familiar. I mean, <laughs> come on, this is... This battle rifle is just mwah. I could go on and on about the similarities, but what really matters here isn't that it just looks like Halo, but that it feels like Halo. It can be very difficult to put into words exactly what makes a particular shooter feel the way it does. Unless you're Racevic. The speed of movement, weapon handling, damage output, and physics all combine together to create a shooter's identity. And the developers at 1047 Games clearly have a strong understanding of what makes Halo, well, Halo, and they bring that into Splitgate. Anyone who has spent many a late nights slaying with friends on the couch or over Xbox Live will find themselves immediately comfortable with Splitgate. Double kill. If I did have a few nitpicks, one would be that I think the melee just doesn't have the oomph it needs, and often I regret using it and wish I just stuck to the shooting. There's also the grenades, which are completely different with their function only being to shut down enemy portals, doing no damage to players. Now, shutting down enemy portals is pretty cool, but I do find myself missing some good old-fashioned fragging. Now, I've just spent all this time talking about how this game does an excellent job of mimicking Halo. But then, why not just go play Halo? I hear they have a new one coming out this year. Also, don't people usually look down on a game that just copies another? Well, unlike Call of Duty, which has been copied to death over the years, no one in my eyes has quite nailed Halo's specific game feel this directly. Because 1047 Games is a small indie staff and not burdened with the massive legacy of expectations and fan demands that come with a long-running series, this frees them up to get weird and experimental with it. Which is the perfect segue into the other half of Halo meets Portal. Indeed, every player has unlimited access to their own personal set of portals that can be placed on portal-approved surfaces. This simple addition opens up a wealth of possibilities. You can pull off some pretty clever maneuvers, like running away from an opponent and then getting a surprise flank. Engaging in a long-distance firefight? Put a portal behind him and shoot him in the back. I mean, when you can set up a sniper perch using portals and do shit like this, the potential of the mechanic speaks for itself. One of my favorite things about the portals is how they enhance existing Halo game types. I've never particularly liked Oddball because the whole point is to get your hands on the ball, but once you do, 
you can't fire your weapons, and are restricted to relying on your teammates to protect you, and boy oh boy, they sure never do that. In Splitgate, the ball carrier can still use their portals. This gives you a lot more agency as you can do fancy maneuvers to escape opponents or even close the gap and go on the offensive with some behind-the-back melee bashing. Some of the most fun I've had with Splitgate so far is when I've been the ball carrier, something I have never said when playing Halo. Now you might be saying to yourself, wow, this looks amazing, but also seems like giving everyone a portal gun would be too chaotic and a balancing nightmare. But it kind of just works, like really well. The slower pace of a Halo style shooter, limiting matches to eight players, and well thought out map design keeps matches from becoming a mess of portal nonsense. And because the fundamentals of the game are so good, you can start off playing Splitgate just like a traditional shooter and still do well and have fun, taking your time to get used to the portals. But once you start thinking with portals, I'm so sorry, that was terrible, you begin to see the depth they can bring. If this all sounds awesome to you, well, then you really have no excuse not to play Splitgate, as it is free to play. It does come with the now traditional free to play trappings you'd expect and probably have your own opinion on at this point. Battle Pass, Rotating Storefront, etc. Thankfully, none of that stuff affects the gameplay, and I personally haven't felt any desire to engage with it, but it is there. There's also crossplay between all three platforms, which is a great sign for the long-term health of the player base. But that might explain why I was completely dominating in some matches on mouse and keyboard. This could cause some balancing concerns down the line that 1047 might want to look into. But hey, I was having a good time. There is the question of whether Splitgate can keep its growing player base around, especially once Halo Infinite's free-to-play multiplayer comes out later this year. I think the portals make Splitgate stand on its own in a way that would allow the two to coexist, but only time will tell. But for now, I'm just going to keep enjoying some Splitgate. Also, I'm just going to say it, I really think there is a missed opportunity for this game to be called Portal Combat. Okay, okay, fine, I'm ending the video. Game over.